Ted Jones messed with the wrong melon farmers. Ted Jones, I also call him the eighth wonder of the real estate world. Ted Jones, who knows, you know, it could be... Ted Jones? The Ted Jones World Podcast. Hello and welcome to the 49th episode of the Ted Jones World Podcast. I am your host, Ted Jones, whether you are listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watching here on YouTube. Episode 48, you should know we had one of the most exciting contests of the past decade, no doubt. The first annual Ted Jones World Vegan Hot Dog Eating Contest was a massive success and Pat is unfortunately not here today, but anytime he's not, he has a valid excuse. And today, he has dinner with his grandparents. All right. It is August and most definitely still summer. And bagels are in, guys. Bagels are always in, I'd say. But summer months, I'd say especially. So we needed to bring on the bagel princess herself, one of the owners of Goldberg's Famous Bagels, Amanda Goldberg. Amanda, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am terrific. Now, Amanda, I'll just give a quick bio and then you tell, tell the world um, everything about you. But um, if you've been to Suffolk County, Long Island, or as some people would call the Hamptons, and you haven't tried a Goldberg's Famous Bagel, well, you are truly missing out. And I don't know if you can call it a full a Long Island experience without having an early morning uh, or slash brun- brunch delicacy. So Amanda, please give us a brief history of Goldberg's Famous Bagels and what your role is at the company. Well, Goldberg's Bagels, well, I'm actually, let's start with, I'm fourth generation in the family business. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it was started by my great grandfather in like 30, the thirties, long time ago, long time ago. And uh, he was part of the bagel union back in the Bronx. So if you go to a Goldberg store and there's a picture of an old truck with the, with the guys in front, that's my family. So the guy in the window is my grandfather. And then I don't know the order, but it's my great grandfather and my other, my great uncles. So that's how you know it's like a real Goldberg's. Well, um, and why, as, as you can imagine, like, uh, it's like Goldberg's a pretty famous Jewish last name and See, it seems, it seems that like Jewish people are really super into bagels. But anyway, continue on with the, with the family legacy. So uh, basically, the long story short is my grandfather, my great grandfather was part of the union. And in the union, you had like, you can only be with the father and one son and the first son. And he had four. So he was the first to come out of the union. And then each son went to different parts of New Jersey. Um, and opened up their own stores. And fast forward 30, 34 years later, my dad opened up the first store 20 years ago in Southampton. And from there, just kept going. Okay, so wait, what is a, a bagel union exactly? What, is, what does that mean? It's like, it's like basically like a, like a union now, like you're just, you're, it's a govern, I don't really know, I don't know much about unions to be honest with you, but it's basically like, they were bagel roll, bagel rollers, and they were contracted to go to certain stores and roll bagels. So it's, I want to say it's called like the union, like the three, six, eight, I have to get back to you on the exact number. Uh It's a world, it's like a famous union out of the Bronx. So, um, I, I mean, I, I, did, were bagels like a super important part of the time back then? Like, I feel like nowadays, um, it's either like you're, you are a bagel person or you're kind of not, right? You know what uh, I mean? Yeah, there's, I mean, nowadays with all these with people and like all of their things, like, you know, like who knows, but bagels were actually back then, they were the size of what a mini bagel is now. And they were sold in, I want to say plain poppy onion and salt only. there was no there was no everything there's no everything everything is like a new concept apparently and they were sold on, they were on a string and you would just take them off a string and my dad would my dad will tell you a story that in one of the first stores in westwood the store was probably like 700 square feet this is it wait this was in where was this westwood new jersey okay this was the first this was so my grandfather 
when they broke out of the union, my grandfather opened his first store in Tenafly, New Jersey, in Westwood, New Jersey. And my dad suggested adding butter and cream cheese. And it was like a huge deal to, to add putting, like, to putting bagels, uh, butter and cream cheese on bagels. So wait, what did people before put cream cheese on? Like, I guess butter you can cook with, but like cream cheese, what? Yeah, yeah exactly. And like, <laughs> nobody, they would just bring them home in a bag and bring them to their families. And then now they have this whole new concept of like putting cream cheese on it before you take it home. Like, what is this? Right. Interesting. Um, so you talk about like that first business, I guess, starting back in the 30s. How many shops do you guys currently own and kind of where is it located? You know, I mentioned just like Long Island being in the Hamptons, but you guys do have other locations in other places. So we're on the north and we're on the North Fork and the South Fork. Um, you know, Greenport, Mattituck, Jamesport, Riverhead. And then, you know, you go and then um, there's like a, a family owned, there's not by us personally, but our family owns, there's one in Patchogue, there's a few in New Jersey, um, but it's all, they're all family owned. So cousins. like all of them all are like your cousins for the most part. Yeah. yeah. So how many do you know, how many would you say are family owned Goldberg's restaurants? Uh, throughout in Long Island or would you just, or like, in, just in general with the Goldberg name that like would have some history behind it so you're not just going to like a random Goldberg's and that you guys don't own between everybody maybe 18 oh wow yeah so how do you guys kind of split that up being like a family business did just people kind of uh, branch off and go their separate ways yeah like my uncle so the original store from, let's say, my, my grandfather is in Westwood. And, and actually, it still exists. Um, it, it's just moved around the corner. So, and, and instead of just bagels with cream cheese and, like, whatever, you can sit. It's open till 6 o'clock. They have, like, chicken pot pies. Like, they've really made it into something different. Um, and then my dad's brother has, like, four stores, like, in northern Jersey. And then my co his cousin has in, like, northwest Jersey and... There's a couple in Central Jersey, and then there's us out here. Now, would you say that the Hamptons, Goldberg's bagel, Bagels, are maybe the most famous? Or I don't want to say the most successful, because I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that they likely are the most popular and successful. But <laughs> would you say that they're the most famous out here? I, I mean, I would, I would say so. I mean, this is, you know, if, if you know the Hamptons, you know it's, you know, a playground of everybody and you know we've had tons of celebrities come into the store well like, like who like wait give us a celebrity in their favorite uh, little treat i'm trying you know i don't remember what they ordered because i don't realize it's them until because right. i because i feel like if if somebody is going into your shop they're likely probably either just waking up or they're hungover or they don't want to be noticed, or likely all three, actually, maybe. Or they, or they send someone. Right, right, right. Or they, or they wait in the car and they send someone inside. But yeah. now, with, now with coronavirus, I mean, the masks are doing people wonders. I'm telling you, like, I've seen some, some eyes that I've noticed, but, like, <laughs> you don't even have to, you don't even really have to, like, say anything to them. So I guess speaking of coronavirus, yeah. how has your guys business kind of been resilient towards this whole thing because like people are definitely still getting bagels i mean are you guys taking extra precautions or what are you guys doing that's different and also the second part of that question do you guys own the spaces that you're in or do you pay rent which could be uh, you know very uh, you know very influential in in a time like this yeah so um i'll start with the second part so we own some of the buildings and we rent some. It, it's like it's like a fifth, uh, like a fifty-fifty. It depends. It depends on the opportunity. It depends on the place. You're right. If the building is for sale, or at that point, just whatever you get into the market. Right. right. Like you know, my dad. Like it's one. I mean, my dad's an amazing man, and he's an amazing businessman. Um. So he's like he's very like if an opportunity comes and, and like you know he had an opportunity with a couple of buildings and he he took it because I mean it, why. I mean, at the, in this time, in this day and age, like you don't know, and it's 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 a good it's a good safety, I think, for a lot of things. Um, but you know, Corona, you know, we're very lucky that our business is like an all year round safe business. You know, like 
bagels are affo are affordable. Um, you know, it, it's not, you know, they're not cheap, but they're also not expensive. So, you know, it was, Corona was a really crazy and interesting time because we were open throughout the whole time, the whole well, thing. It, well, I mean, it still is. Still is yeah, really crazy. I, mean, I mean, it's really, of course, you know, in, in the beginning, it was like, you know, to watch what was happening. Like, you know, I remember like back in, let's say early March, like I was wearing gloves and then all of a sudden you have to cover your face and, and then taking that precaution because A, I'm serving people food, B, I'm putting myself at risk, being there and being near people and see like, you know, sanitizing and, you know, so we, we shortened our hours and we shortened our staff's hours just so they can get extra rest. And, you know, we took an, um, we closed an hour early to sanitize the whole store every single day and on top of going around with sanitizing wipes and, you know, everything that people touch was wiped down. Um, and you don't, and do, do any of your stores right now have indoor seating? No. Any one that you know of? We, we, we have a couple of outdoor seating, like a couple of things, yeah. but you know, we're, we're still limiting the amount of people that come in the store. So if I, like, let's say for my East Quad location, um, I don't have, I don't have any tables in there because it'll be too crammed. You know, I don't want to take up, you know, then I only allowed to have two people come in at, at a time. So I have two seats set up in a window, like on the bar stool. And, you know, that's just two people can sit and hang and have something to eat and that's it. Okay. But also nine out of 10 times you're buying bagels and sandwiches and you're taking them home to your family because you have everybody's here. You're, right, right, right. Like everyone wants a piece of that Goldberg's bagel. So you talk about, you know, potentially putting yourself at risk, like just working on a day-to-day -day basis. Are you still... Um, cause I know originally you had, you had told me that you bounce around from store to store and that's kind of like how you go about your day is just mm -hmm. going around and making sure everything's moving smoothly. Would you say maybe more so now it's more hands-on cause like you really have to make sure that everybody is following the correct protocols and what is kind of like your day to day schedule look like? You know, I, I know for the most part, like you mentioned, you're in East Quag, but do you make your way out to Montauk and then go to the East Hampton location and then Wayne Scott and Southampton and Bridgehampton and all the, all these places. So like, how do you kind of prioritize everything? So I don't really go East. So basically through the stores out here, it's me, my parents. Well, um, you, sorry, Amanda, just when you say um, out here, just to be clear oh, to everyone yeah. watching and viewing, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so in the Hamptons, it's me and my parents, um, our cousins, Paul and Diane, and I have a business partner, Chris. So we're the, we're the owners, like, you know, Paul and Diane and my parents basically own from, you know, Wayne Scott East. And then, you know, we, and also, also my uncle. So I don't really have to go all the way east, which is nice because I think I would have to hire a driver. Right, you know, literally. Because like, like going <laughs> from East Quag to Southampton is how long for you? 20 minutes? Well, it depends. Like, right. this, um, it depends where you're, what time you're going, where <laughs> you're going. Like this morning I was in East Hampton and I drove to East Quag and the traffic coming from East Quag East I mean, it was backed up from, like, from, let's say, the Jitney stop in Southampton all the way down to, like, the Hampton Bays exit. So, basically, like, Amanda talking about um, a simple drive that should potentially take you 40 minutes. How long did that take you? An hour and a half? Easy. Well, I was going the right direction, so it would probably <laughs> take me an hour and a half to get from East Quad to Southampton. Yeah, it's so funny, like, just being in Long Island, the amount of traffic there is just on a whim, and you can't really explain it. So... Amanda, you can't talk about Goldberg's without talking about a number of different delicious sandwiches and such. And I think that one that people just really don't understand, and if you walk into any Goldberg's, like any one that you guys have a part of, uh, it's the Flagel. Ah. People are like, what the heck is a Flagel? So can you please elaborate and let us know what a flagel is. It's because it's not, it's not a fake bagel, right, Amanda? No, absolutely not. Well, we call it a flat now, but. Um, oh my, okay. So you guys went more like modern with the word, with yeah. the wording. Go ahead. We've gotten fragle, fagel, 
like people butcher the name, so it's a flat, but I'm, I'm sure I'm going to ruin a lot of lives when I tell people this. It's just a flattened bagel. And that's it. That's it. It's just a flattened bagel. There's no secret. But didn't, didn't you guys invent the flagel? Didn't you guys I, invent I, it? That, that was like my dad's thing. Like on, by accident, he was like, oh, let me like press it down because it was, the bagel was overproofed. Because when, when you make the dough... Oh, are you about to, are you about to tell, you're about to give us the deets about how to make a bagel? Okay. Okay, well, no, I'm, I'm giving it. I'll give us a quick, just clue, step by, you know, skip a couple oh, steps. Okay, so you have to basically, I can't tell you the ingredients because it's a family secret. Okay, but we put, it in, we put it in a mixer and, you know, I wish, I actually, it would have been cool if we, maybe I'll send you a video and you mix, and the mixer makes the dough and then we, you know, we put it through a bagel machine that makes the bagels. And then we put it in the walk-in box and the bagel has to proof, like basically overnight. And then once it proofs, we put it in a huge kettle of boiling water and for about five, two to five minutes. And we have um, burlap, like boards with burlap on it. And we put the seeds on and we put it in the oven and we flip it. And then it was like 20 minutes later, you have a fresh bagel. Well, you made it, you, you, I mean, it's the way you're talking about it. You're like, oh yeah, it's so simple. You just put the oatmeal in the microwave and press <laughs> and press go. So that's literally how I would do it. Yeah. But cool. If anyone's trying to make bagels that you need, you need quite the gear, but that sounds exciting. So Amanda, I am a massive fan of bagels myself. Um, I've been scooping it out a little bit, you know, trying to yeah. save some, save some calories in the middle. And then also when you put like the tofu scallion cream cheese in the middle, it really does squish it together nicely. It has a nice balance. Like when you make, when you make a bagel and you like, I personally like to scoop it out because I'm, I'm a big, if you go on our Instagram and you see all like the food, porn, shout it out, shout it out uh, at the original Goldbergs, check it out. It's really, uh, if you're you've, got, you've got quite a, quite a few delicious looking pictures on there for Thank sure. You. But you know, the scooped out bagel though, like it sits perfectly inside. It's great for pictures. You are making me hungry girl. So Amanda, being that I am a vegan, most people might think that it's difficult, I guess, to have a bagel, but I'm a vegan for the most part now. Like I don't eat eggs, chicken, pig, cow, slash cheese put a little almond milk in my coffee if I need to. And I do like fish once every two weeks. So I guess I'm a pescatarian or a, a, vesc pescatarian. a, vesc a pescatarian. vescatarian as, as, <laughs> as we are, are saying right now. But um, so besides the, the tofu scallion cream cheese, which is quite delicious to get there on a toasted flat, everything flagel, <laughs> what else could a vegan get at a, a Goldberg's Famous Bagels? You know, well, it depends on your location. Every every location is a little bit different. Everybody has tofu for sure. Um, one thing that I've been noticing this summer that people are really liking is they're doing um, hash brown with avocado on a bagel and hot sauce. Is that a vegan move? I, I mean, I, I guess. And even if you really want to get crazy, put a little bit of tofu on there, get that like oh. thing, and maybe some onion and tomato like i don't know how crazy you want to get but right you know um people are doing that we like some places we have falafel um on yeah. a bagel yeah why not you do falafel falafel and a little hummus on a bagel do you do like falafel hummus spread i mean i guess hummus itself is a spread so it's not yeah. like i mean you could do it in a wrap too um and you know like really we can't like one thing that I did, a lot of people also get are like, and that I've, because I'm, I'm a pescatarian also. So if you come to East Quag and especially in East Quag and Southampton, we have like a lot of like, we carry these like hundred calorie bagels now. No um, way. What are the sizes? They're, of not, they're not from us. It's um, this great girl that I met over Instagram on um, My Sexy Veggies. And she makes these tahina based bagels. And I literally have one maybe five times a week. Uh -huh. And I put like lox and avocado and like veggies on it. And I, so I can eat it because I can't eat. I'm gluten free and dairy free okay. and allergic to everything. So like we have a lot of stuff that you could like, if you're a vegan, if you're gluten free, you can take the everything but the bagel seeds and put it on your eggs or whatever you eat. And it's like having an everything crunch without the bagel. Yeah, that's amazing. So, I mean, you have an option for everyone. So, Amanda, quickly, I guess, like, 
This is a question that I have been wondering forever, and I'm sure anyone who has really maybe ever gotten a bagel with any sort of butter or cream cheese, how, how do workers or people who are making the bagels decide how much cream cheese they're going to slather on this bagel? Um, do, you guys a- have, do you guys have a measurement system? No, you know, not really. I, I, I actually have a new kid that started, and someone asked for a little bit of cream cheese, and I looked at him, and I go, what did, what did they ask for? He goes, well, just a little bit less. I said, there's, like, nothing on here, dude. Like, and, I, and like, basically, when we train people, we're like, you don't Just put on as much as you yeah, can. Just put, just put it on. If people ask, some people ask for extra, they want, like, this much cream cheese on it. Some people literally want nothing. But I, when I make a bagel, personally, I think about Instagram. Because that's the generation. Right. How, is so it. <laughs> How is this going to look on Instagram later? Right. So that's. But, but is cream cheese expensive though? Like, I feel like, no, I'm obviously not talking about like you guys in particular. I'm talking about just in general. Like, anytime there's, I've really ever gotten a cream cheese sandwich, like, there's no lack of cream cheese on that bagel. Like, I'm typically, you know, taking a lot of it off. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I don't think cream cheese that, is that expensive. Like, but also we buy it in like the fifty pound bricks. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Like you gotta get rid of it like before it goes yeah. to that. <laughs> and everything's yeah. fresh, and everything yeah. is made to like you know obviously everything's made to order. Right. So, like you know whatever we run out of, we'll never run out of cream cheese. Like, and probably. also Goldberg's famous bagels likely has the largest selection of cream cheese in the entire country. I'd say at any given moment you've got to have thirty out just right in front of that glass. Like oh, 30 he, different yeah. kinds of cream cheese. Got a few fish lined up. Okay, so Amanda, with all of these, with all of these, I guess, options of what to order, what's the most popular order that you see like across the board in Long Island in the Hamptons? Um, like, you're, not, you're, not seeing, you're not seeing like caviar on bagels, right? Like nothing dramatic no, no, like that. Nothing like that. Um, everyone likes a good New Yorker. Uh, which is like cream cheese, lox, tomato, onion, capers. You can never go wrong with that. And then um, another sandwich that my dad um, came up with that is probably one of the most popular breakfast sandwiches is the hobo. I was hoping you were going to talk about the hobo. <laughs> so before I switched over to, to the vegan side, um, I would have a spice, spicy hobo oh like God. every single Saturday or Sunday. Um, just it, the best hangover cure of all time. Just honestly, one of the better sandwiches I think I have ever had. So you say that like, that's probably, is that at every, uh, every Goldberg's? The every single spicy Goldberg's. Goldberg's. Every sp- single Goldberg's. And now like, you know, it just was the hobo, which is a bacon, egg and cheese with the hash brown. But like, people are like, they get it with sausage now or turkey bacon. So like, basically you throw a hash brown on any egg sandwich. Like you really can't go wrong. So just say it again. The hobo is what? Can you say it again? Hobo is a bacon, egg, and cheese with a hash brown, like a, like a hash brown patty. On, does that does that come with cheese also or no? Oh yeah, yeah, cheese too. And cheese there, and, and I'm sure. And if you spicy. go ahead, yeah. sorry, I mean to if you make it spicy, it's uh, hot sauce and pepper jack. Oh my god! So you can literally just have one of the greatest sandwiches of your life, and it sounds quite simple. And then other people just throw whatever tastes good and Goldberg's on it too. Avocado. Avocado is like the hottest thing I think in the past like two summers. Right. And um, to drink is iced coffee. Oh, iced coffee. Some locations have nitro iced coffee. Um, actually, I think East Quag is the only one that has it on tap. I have a keg of coffee, which nice. is really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can't go out with an iced coffee and and a hobo i mean and you and you guys have the largest iced coffee i've ever had the big gulp <laughs> how, how many ounces is a big gulp is that is that 40 that yeah it I think could so. be 40 i think anyway it's, it, it's a it's a lot of coffee and it is delicious so amanda with all these locations all the all this family working all the time you guys are in in the store it's 6 a.m it sounds like and then you're there until you're sanitizing it down eight hours later or however many hours later. Have you guys thought about going national with the brand, you know, like selling a portion of it and letting some guy or some lady open up, you know, another 30 stores around the country and then just getting money that way? You know, it's, for us, it's like, would that be nice? Of course it would be, but um, we're very hands-on. Like you were, I mean, we're only a certain amount of people. So 
but we're all at the locations. Like, you know, you could go to Southampton and I know that's where you frequent, right? You guys go to Southampton a lot. Like, you know, my mom's on the grill, my dad's on the oven, like, you know, I'm, I'm on the grill on the weekends. Like, you know, my cousins, like we're all, we're all there. So it, it does also a way for us to do quality control. So that way we know we're putting out a good product. We know you're getting the best that you could get. Like once you add like someone you don't know in there and like, it's like going to a, a 7-Eleven, like one 7 is awesome. And then you go to the other one, you're like, what, like, what is this? Right. So whether, far- whether it's a service or whether it's like actually what's available there. Like you mentioned 7-Eleven, like you could think like, well, like, all right, 7-Eleven just has Slurpees, maybe gas and snacks. But like at the same time, if the, that particular 7-Eleven doesn't have maybe the quick breakfast you like or those hot dogs in the front that you like or the like nice vibe or the Slurpee machine's always broken, the iced coffee doesn't work, the right. gas is too expensive, whatever it does. Definitely there are a lot of moving pieces and especially in a business like making bagels, and really putting a love and family care into a bagel, it's different. You know, like, yeah, obviously there could be a Goldberg's in New York City, and I'm sure it would do great, but chances are it probably wouldn't taste as good as the bagels that your family make, just because there's a lot of love and care that goes into that. Am I well, right? We're family. Yeah, we're, we're family. We're a family-run business. You know, we know our customers. Like, you know, we, like, the same people come back. If, if you're here only in the summer... You know, the kids, oh my God, the kids grew up so much over the winter. Or, you know, this kid came back from college or this kid's mom wants to send him bagels for Christmas in Hawaii because he can't come back. Like, you know, we, you know, we're, we, we're here, we're, we're part of the community and, you know, we just, uh, you know, we're, we're all, I mean, we're all family. Like we're a community that comes together. We're a small community. Um, You know, even if there's thousands of people out here, like, you know, we like, look, I've known you for how many years? Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. it really, it really is nice to be able to go into a store and kind of to see the same faces and just have the same like quality, um, quality control. You know, I, I thought about it. I've had people approach me about it. Um, I've had, I've had somebody even say like, Hey, I'll financially back you to, to go here. You know, I, it's just, I'm not, I'm not in it for that. Like, I'm just, you know, I, I actually, it's crazy. I love what I do. I've always wanted to do this and be in my family's business. You know, I've branched out into like a different concept where I have, um, I have Buddha a, balls, Buddha balls in yeah, oh, no, no, no. Hampton's beach balls, <laughs> Hampton's beach balls in Bridgehampton. Yeah. So that's like my, my like tennis, like healthy eating concept that I've always wanted to do. And that's like, you know, my little, my baby and, and, you know, so maybe go with that. I don't know. You know, I don't know what the future holds. You know, All I know right. is that, you know, if an opportunity comes up and I can do it without spreading myself too thin, I'll take it. Right. Um, but, you know, I'm always open to ideas and concepts and, and, and evolving. Right. Because so. it also sounds like with what you have right now, like you said, you're very freaking hands on. So for you to like yeah. take on another project that like, like leans you in a, the whole new direction like you really kind of just have to figure out what you're going to be doing um on like a day-to-day basis so everyone that is listening and watching this episode is probably like all right well whatever i've had a bagel like panera bagels are fine i don't mind like getting one for 99 cents with like a slab of butter whatever it'll do the job but what do you think makes goldberg's i don't know and i guess i'll boldly say it like one of the best, if not the best bagel in the country and maybe the world, you know, and New York does have, um, you know, does have a good reputation for having good water and then good bagels. But I mean, what can you say about Goldberg's that's so different? You know, I think it's just, uh, I know it, sound, it might sound crazy. It's like the love you put into the, the food, you know, it's, it's the, the, the consistency of it. Like, so we have we have the same guy making bagels for us for 20 years like he makes the dough and you know there's a couple of people that come in in between and it's like it's just consistency it's it's caring about the product look you know if my dad sees a like a crap bagel or doesn't see this working he won't he won't serve it you know it, it's just he's just it's just knowing what you're putting out and knowing the business 
Right. Yeah. And especially since you guys have been doing it so successfully for so long, it's just kind of, you don't want to change like a winning habit as they'd say. So Amanda, thank you so much for joining us here on episode 49. And before we let you go here, you got to give us three things that you'd recommend at Goldberg's Bagels. And, and please tell us uh, like something from the secret menu, something that we can't just see up there on the menu board, something that we really got to know. So give us, I guess, three things you recommend, would recommend if you could, if you can, and uh, a secret item. So three things that I recommend food-wise? Yes. Okay. So not, okay. not vegan. Please don't think about not me. For, for this one second, please don't, please don't think about me. Um, okay, so oof, this is hard. Okay, well, you know what? I'll, I'll give the first one for you, okay. Easy, okay. The, the, the hobo. Because you said oh, hobo, hobo, yes. Spicy okay. hobo, everything, everything flagel toasted. <laughs> there you yeah. go. That, that, yeah. that was my favorite, but that's like the staple. Yes. Okay. The what else? If you if oh, if we want to go to lunch, the Southampton, which is like a gar, it's a garlic hero with roast beef, tomato, munster, and Peter Luger sauce. Ooh. Yeah. That um, and then um, Rubens pastrami Rubens. So, so basically, just just like your cl your classic American yeah. Jewish deli. Yeah, and of course, I mean, the New York bagel, because, like, the, the locks that we have, like, you know, we hand slice it. It's, like, straight out of Brooklyn, literally. <laughs> and it is so good. Sometimes it's, it, like, it tastes like butter. Um, and then a secret item. Sure. Hmm. Something that, like, you maybe know about or, like, maybe one of the cooks was in the kitchen was messing around with it. And then you were like, dude, what are you eating? And then he or she was like, well, I don't know. I just, we had extra of it. We were about to throw it out. And I just threw it on a sandwich. And look how good it looks. Some, some locations, what I, the, the, the turkey brie special with the uh, sautéed apples. What? I guess it just, it just depends on <laughs> what, it, it, it just depends on what, honestly, you're into. It sounds like you can make literally yeah. anything over there at Goldberg's famous bagels anything you want we can make it happen within within reason within you, reason very nice so okay so it's corona time right now um if i did usually want a bagel and i had your number i would text you and hopefully you can make it happen you know within a few minutes but you know that's because we i have vip access to the back door <laughs> I do. So I literally, I literally sometimes walk in. I'm like, hi, Denise. Hi, Mark. Because Amanda's. They Amanda's love that. Friend. They love when they see. Because I've no, I've <laughs> known Amanda. I've known Amanda for probably it, at least 20 years now. Um, Amanda was like the first like tennis hero I ever had. I saw Amanda play tennis, and I was like, wow, I want to play tennis too. <laughs> and then I found out she owned a bagel store, and then there you go. So then the friendship blossomed. But anyway, yeah. um. So I forget kind of what I was saying. Okay, wait, no, I remember. Back All right, door. so, okay, so, the, so, you know, not everyone's allowed to go in the back door of Goldberg's, obviously. So how does one go about getting a Goldberg's bagel during this coronavirus fiasco? Um, we are open to the public um, with social distancing and certain amounts of people in the store. In the store, okay. Yeah, um, some stores have text orders, so you can text us. Um, and you call, we, we do phone orders, we do curbside, we do pickup, you can pay before you come. Like we're, we're basically whatever the person that's ordering is comfortable with, we can make it happen. Oh, so for the most yeah. part, you guys are not really experiencing like, I mean, too many different things just besides the fact that people can't like sit in the store. And we can't hear you when you order. So speak a little louder. Right. And everyone must continue wearing masks and don't yeah. be in the phone. That hasn't changed. Just oh, don't. No. Phone hasn't changed. Phones, phones have got to go. Put it down. It's 2020 for a second. Yeah. Amanda Goldberg, episode 49, Goldberg's Famous Bagels. You guys got to try one if you haven't had one. And if you have tried one, you know why we did a freaking podcast episode about this. Amanda, thank you so much for coming thank through the you. Ted Jones World Podcast. Thank you all for listening and watching. And we'll see you next week for episode 50. Amanda, have a terrific thank you so evening. Much. You too. Thank you.